we have numbers in a column. We want the last five. Then we need to add and show the five values. When I change this to six, I need the total and the number showing to update. When I add a new value to the bottom, we want everything to update. We're going to use the lookup function index. In the array, those are the values we want to look up, comma. And for row number, we're going to start by looking up and retrieving the last value. Well, we can simply use rows on the same column. That'll count how many rows, which happens to be exactly the position of the last item in the list. That formula, close parentheses, will look up the last item. Now, our goal is the last five, so we're going to copy that. And when we use a colon, now index is instructed to look up the cell reference rather than the value. Now Control V, because the end of the dynamic range we're creating is the last cell, so we just have to alter row number. Well, I'm going to subtract 5. That's one too many, because I need to go from the last position 4 up. So I add one back in. Now if I hit the F9 key, boom, we have our last five values. Control Z. Now index, when we use the colon operator, returns a range of values. So in any version, you can simply put it inside of sum if your goal is to add. And there we go. We have added the values for the last five. Now if we come and copy that entire dynamic range, Control C. If we need an average, we use the aggregate function, average, control V, close parentheses, and enter. Now if we want to extract the values and display them in a column, in any version of Excel, we can simply use the same formula element. But for row number, I don't want the position of the last one. I want 4 above. So we subtract the 5, F4. Now a moment ago, we added 1. Here we need to add 1. In the next row, we need to add 2, and then 3, and so on. So we'll use our formula number incrementer, rows. I'm sitting in F6, F dollar sign 6, colon F6, close parentheses. And that little amendment right there will work. Control Enter. And when I copy it down, that is amazing. Now, there are errors here. And what we do not want to do is come up and use if error, because that means the formula has to run every time. So if there's an alternative logical test, which there is, we should use it. We're going to copy rows. And for the logical test, Control V, I'm simply going to ask the number incrementer, when are you past row 5? F4. That's the logical test, comma. The value if true is double quote, double quote. That zero length text string will display nothing, comma. And the value of false is our formula. Close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now the absolute amazing thing about Office 365 and the new Excel calculation engine is going to be illustrated here. We don't need anything except for that dynamic range, Control C. We just Control V. And because F9, it's delivering multiple items, Control Z, when I hit Enter, it spills. And the amazing thing is the exact same formula that worked on numbers will work on text also. When we come up and change this to 6, everything updates. When I come and add a new value, we get our new total, average, and displayed values. Bonus formula number two. We can use filter, but in the include argument, we had to do one, two, three different array operations to generate the correct array of trues and falses. So without timing, I would say this is my preference. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, if you want to see a throwback video to how we accomplished this before we had Excel tables, check out this video. And if you want to learn more about these amazing dynamic arrays, here's a video for you.